Uh, hi, this is my pleasure today to invite Christina Darche, a researcher and, and writer, and uh, who is going to talk to us about uh, outstanding Georgian female artist, Emma Lalaeva Dibiridze. Uh, hi, Christina, and thank you for joining me. Good to see you all. Thank you. So uh, let's start at the beginning. So uh, I, I think we should start with the name because uh, as, I, as I read in your outstanding book on Emma, um, so she used Lali as her pseudonym, right? As an artist. Exactly. exactly. Uh, Emma Lali Vetipirizu was her full name, but she chose herself uh, Lali as her creative pseudonym. So she used to sign her own works by this name in Georgian, Russian, or Latin letters. Uh, I can show you here, for example, like this, mm -hmm. it's just a graphic, graphic image of her. Um, Christina, can you please do it as a slideshow? Uh, because I see the presentation. Oh. Yeah, if you can oh, sorry, do it. Uh, sorry, I, I think I did it. Sure. Um, uh, you can say, okay. from, yeah, perfect. Sounds great. Looks yeah. great. Thank you. So, Emma Lavadibeta was her full name, but she, as usual, she used to sign her own works under this name, Lali. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it seems for, for me that she wanted to stay in the history. She wanted to be known by this pseudonym for wild society. So that's why I mostly call her by this well-sounding name. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, but before we will start talk about Lali's painting, I think we should say a few words concerning Georgian modernism in general and the cultural life of the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, the 1910s and 1920s are one of the most significant periods in Georgian art. Such a vibrant cultural life can be explained uh, primarily be, can be explained by the political circumstances of that period, especially, especially uh, uh, by a short-term independence that unfortunately lasted just for three years, as you may know, from 1918 to 1921. The result of independence, besides all other benefits and goods, was also active contact with the new world. Avant-garde trends of arts uh, fill every sphere, every field of art for that time uh, with a new creative energy. Uh, and fine arts among them that developed simultaneously with world artistic trends. Together with artists, uh, with the European artists, Georgian artists started to work in the new, in the avant-garde movements, in the new avant-garde trends. Uh, and what is very important, uh, uh, Georgian artists tried to bring out problems of nationalism in art anew. And at the same time, they were became the players of, of the world society. Uh, in this time period, Georgian art became a part of world global cultural life, cultural processes, possibility of which Georgia unfortunately was artificially deprived of later, as you may know. Sure, and um, also it's interesting, and I think it's important also that a lot of uh, different artists, writers, poets. Uh, for sure, I'm going to talk about it right now. Yes, exactly. I, I just want to say a few words about Felici because, but uh, I must mention that Felici wasn't the name for that time, for that times. Not Felici, but Felici was the name of the capital of Georgia. And Felici became a cultural oasis at the beginning of the 20th century. After declaring independence uh, May 20, 26, 1918, the political, social, and cultural, cultural center of the country was shifted to Tbilisi. Georgian poets, writers, actors, and directors moved to Tbilisi. And in addition, and we must say about a few words about Georgian artists, and then I will move to the foreigners. Of course. Here on the slide, you can see uh, pictures of Georgian artists, uh, for example, um, in, in, in 1916, a prominent Georgian artist and public figure, Dimitri Shevardnadze, returned from Germany. So I want to say that Georgian artists stay, studying and staying abroad started returning home in 1910s. Uh, the same year, another famous artist, Iris Zanevich, demobilized from the army due to one of of his life, returned home. A year later, his brother, Ilya Zanevich, well known all over the world as Ilyas, also came back. As well as this, a little later, well known Georgian artist, David Gagabatin, uh, Charlotte Kikoti, returned from Russia. At the same time, young members of the avant garde group of Tisper Gantelev, Georgian poet group of um, 
since we're going to be moved to live in Tbilisi from Kutaisi. Kutaisi is another big city in Georgia. Yeah, so I just Kutaisi. It's such an amazing, yeah. amazing city. I was really fascinated by its history and culture. You, you know, when you live in Georgia, Kutaisi is just a stop from <laughs> Tbilisi. Yeah. To when you visit and you, the locals who actually know the cultural history there, they show you around. It's such an amazing legacy of the city. I was exactly, really exactly. Uh, and by the way, Kutaisi was one of the most significant cities for Georgia at the end of 19th century, the beginning of 20th century, because it, it was uh, the center of culture before it became Tbilisi. That's why I mentioned that Isperhan Zarebi, they were all from Kutaisi, they lived and worked there, and they moved at the beginning of the 20th century, they moved to live to Tbilisi because Tbilisi became the center. So Tbilisi took, I would say, this estafet from Kutaisi uh, to Tbilisi. And Tbilisi was especially attracted to the Russian cultural elite. Tbilisi attracted Russian writers, poets, musicians, actors, directors, who later became driving forces of the cultural life of the city. It is significant that work of Russian artists and poets of this period are considered to be important in the history of both Georgian and Russian art. These were well acknowledged by the Russian guests, by the way. Um, uh, for example, a well-known uh, futurist poet, uh, Alexei Kuruchonev, wrote that the center of art was, had been moved to Tbilisi. And Boris Pasternak, as you can see here on the slide, mentioned that this, this city, Tbilisi, for whom I have seen there and for what I'm returning from there and what I bought there will be like shopping, scrapping, marble, Venice, and Ritka. One chapter from the ch chapter of protection, which has been with me all my life. So I want to say that the Tbilisi became the center as it was realized uh, by the foreigners as well. Here on the slide, you can see some expressions and citations uh, of uh, famous people concerning Tbilisi and Tbilisi's cultural life of that time. Mm -hmm. At the time span of 1917-1921 until the end of the 20s is an extremely busy period for the history of 20th century Georgian art. The center of Georgia art, Tbilisi, was surrounded by the alluring mist of Bohemian life. Creative life was striving in a Georgian modernism. Uh, a Georgian modernism is, how say, is the Georgian equivalent of the Western avant-garde of the 20th century. So we use mostly we use with this term, not uh, Georgian avant-garde, but Georgian modernism, because it expresses the idea of avant-garde or Georgian model of avant-garde better than the term avant-garde. So uh, I, what I wanted to say that. Um, uh, the Georgian modernist was developing uh, was, uh, and in, uh, and in this, this process actively participated not just the Georgian, but not Georgian artists as well, including Lali, uh, the hero of our meeting today. Mm, here are some you know, nice picture with uh, Georgian artists altogether. I'm not going to talk about uh, Lali. I just uh, to talk, I'm going to talk about Lali, but I'm not going to tell you her her biography. I just gave some slides with the uh, important dates from her life. Uh, uh, Christina, I just wanted to to start. So um, I I think it's also important to say that she was born in the family of photographer, right? So uh, she was born in the family of photographer. And uh, from her childhood, I think she grew up in this atmosphere. Yes. She also was a good friend for Georgian uh, writers like Titian Davide Paolo Yashvili and Georgian uh, well-known artists like Elena Fredian Ketomakalashvili, for example, or Sergo Kukulat a little bit later. Uh, so, and she, uh, and she also, uh, she, she, uh, she studied in our, uh, the Finance Academy of Tbilisi as well, and she was uh, she was uh, familiar with the Georgian um, uh, cultural society. I want to say, uh, and all, and what is the um, what is uh, what must be said by us that uh, names like David Kagbaterene, Ferdinand Kitomavala, Shvili, Shalash, Dimitri Shavanate, others these are names very well known in history of Georgia. But alongside with them, their lived and work very gifted, were good artists whose personalities and works practically are invisible for, uh, for art historians for the several, for the different reasons. And Emma Laiva is among them. She is one of those tragic people. Uh, she lived in fear in the shadow of her husband, who uh, re repressed in 1938 by totalitarian regime. And I think that this is one of the reasons why uh, her recognition was postponed for a long time. Uh, here you can see also. 
her her husband she, he was a geologist and, and as i read in your book so he was building a, a lot of he devoted a lot of time of his time to build the um, okay. factory in chiatura right so and he was in uh, yeah in metallurgic kind of industry yeah and lali was also working a uh, for the theater of uh, Chiatura for some time while his husband lived there. And then he came to the victim of the repression, of the Stalin's repression in 1937 yes. uh, or 38. 30, 38, 38 yes, in this case. Lali, but it's 37 as well now. Yeah. Yeah. And what's special can be said about Lali? Mm. Uh, Emily Lava de Vise Edi Berize is an ex exceptionally interesting and typical representative of the 1920s, I think. Lali is one of the most left wing among the Georgian artists of the period. Her creative works reveal a sharp interest towards Western avant garde. As an exceptionally unfading artist, maintaining a creatively active position, Lali addresses almost all of the avant gardist movements like futurist, futurist, constructivism, Luchis, by the way. Like uh, Luchis was well known in uh, Europe and you say uh, as a rayonist or race. However, she doesn't utilize any of these in, in a pure form, which is very interesting. The artist manages to build her own style and to be uniquely original. And I will try to show you. Uh, this is a nice picture. I'll try to show right? you yeah. the specific originality of Lala Vatibirice on the special examples. I will try to logically uh, show um, logically show her artistic manner and uh, her unique artistic manner. Let's start from the uh, and for this I group the works according to their belonging to artistic moments. Uh, let's start from the um, from uh, the works that show the artistic method elaborated by her based on applying and sciences and the synthesis a synthesizing method of several movements simultaneously within one creative work this method can be labeled as a synthetic method so i think this is one of the best works in her creative uh, uh, so let's start from this. It can be mentioned from the very beginning that Lali, first of all, is a graphic painter. Therefore, the liner graphic manner acquires a leading role in her creative works. Lali works uh, uh, Lali's works are largely painted on paper or, in cup, or cardboard in pencil, sanguine, watercolor, or wash. This determines the style of their artistic expression in each specific example. However, despite similarities and differences, these works share one common feature. The preferences is given to the drawing in the picture. So the drawing overrules the composition and the color is subdued by the line. So the color has just the secondary function. Uh, discussing the influence of the avant-garde movements over the creative works by Lali, we should mention the ability of the painter to fully master new movements and make them her own. Creative freedom acquired in this work enables her to employ an expressive manner typical of several moments within the frames of one and the same work, and thus achieve a surprising, I would say, uh, or organic synthesis. Uh, such samples you can see here on the screen. Uh, these are the creative works made mostly in black and green, in which Cubist, Futurist, Cuba Futurist, and Constructivist paintings techniques meet in the same plane and give the rise to an aspect of cinematography. Cinematography is the most attractive topic of the fine arts of the 20th century, as you all know. All the time. It was new and fresh, of course. Yes, it was new and fresh way of looking. Yes. Yes. yes, and it was a completely new phenomenon created by the technical progress and processing magic figurative. And it was the uh, totally new expressive language. And it was also the new theoretical discourse. So it's, it's, I think it's very logical that it's attracted and interested a number of avant-gardist uh, painters in the world. For example, we can call David Kachorch and David Kakovace, or Russian because he knew my language, or uh, for example, European, uh, Spanish, uh, Salvador Dali, for example. Yes, yes. Um, yeah. yes. Also futurists there, Italian futurists. Futurist, especially futurists, because yes, they, they admire cinematography. cinematography as the totally new expression. And for example, and, uh, what I'm going to do is to show you what's um, what's connection this uh, group of works has with uh, have the with um, um, cinematography. For example, this work, as you can see on the slide, depicts a landscape of a street broken down, employing the method of futurist simultaneous. 
Where, as you can see, here are the various interior and exterior sites construed in the so-called colors. But I, I, I use this word with term colors just uh, arbitrary, not in the yes. not in the exact sense. Yes. Yeah. It's um, it's made in graphic cubist manner and other makeup transparent layers. So we have here like transparent layers which are arranged side by side. Uh, look it's at this more like a storyboard when they create the yes. right? It's yes, create exactly. Yes. Uh, yes. Wow. And looking at this picture, I think it's impossible not to recall a well-known futurist thesis. Uh, I want to show you the station from the thesis concerning the painting techniques. So they say, as you can see here, we open a figure like a window and place an environment in which he, she lives into it. We can claim that the curve can climb up on your window, that your head may cross the street situated in front, left, or right. So I think this is, uh, you, the, I think that Lali is somehow following this uh, thesis of Futurism. Yeah. It, it looks like this. Yeah. And this can be seen the picture built up with a simultaneous unity of uh, semantically absurd independent things. The whole plane is a collage, let's say, of shots of various plots. These are the transparent scenes that at the, at the same time, you know, they not overlap each other, but they are somehow uh, on the same, on the same um, surface of the picture. And uh, at, at such time, all of the scenes are equally observ observable, but in relation to each other, they require digital reading as they create new of an absurd reality. I believe that this work stands very close to futurists, uh, to futurists not just by artistic methodologies, but by its internal logic. By means of specific compositional technique, Lali achieves a similar effect as uh, consequently creates similar sensations uh, in the viewer. It's like cinema, it's, it looks like the cinematographic shoot that comes to the eye of the viewer because it's very, because when you're looking at this picture, your eye works very dynamic. If I express right. my job. It just it moves in front of your eyes. It just kind of recedes yeah. and goes into the distance. Yes. Exactly. Comes closer. Oh so. uh, yeah. I think this is the characteristic feature of this work. Because the scenes coexist and substitute each other like film shows. And uh, it's like uh, the cinematic like it's uh, it's so uh, uh, the scenes um, are as fast as cinematic sh shots come into contact with the eye of the viewer. Uh, I think it's... Uh... Uh, Christina, I want to ask you, so... Um, but, here, but, sorry, but here are some other pictures where uh, she is also using this method. And I, uh, I forgot to say that it's kind of, she's, I think that she tries to make, uh, she tries to make uh, the, uh, picture with the black and like the black and white mute film. Mm -hmm. so she's trying to, so she's, she's in dialogue with cinematography. It's yeah. kind of insist dialogue with cinematography. Mm -hmm. And I think that she's uh, choosing this uh, 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 uncolorful uh, black and white. Yeah, kind of, yes. Uh, she's, uh, she's using restricted palette to work with. I wanted to ask you though, so, before she kind of went in this direction, uh, this futurism, this kind of very direct uh, dialogue with cinematography, was she ever interested? Uh, she, she received classical training. So uh, I'm just curious uh, to know about her early works. Were they just following the classical models or from early on she started to kind of go into this novel direction? Was it some kind of breakthrough for her or she started this way from the very beginning? I think she started this from the very beginning. So these works are from 1920s. Most of them are from 1924-1925, and uh, these are the earlier works from her uh, of uh, Lali's earlier works. Mm -hmm. uh, and yes, and uh, I, I would say that this um, achromatism, which which what she used in these pictures, uh, this um, black and white and gray, this is the uh, this is the technique employed. Uh, by Lali, it's the well-taught artistic conception, I would say. Yes. And according to which she selects this expressive graphic manner. Mm -hmm. So, um, 
this achromatic appearance of these pictures takes us as it takes our association to this to cinematography. And it was her goal which she achieves by with this manner. And so um, and she chose so uh, it seems to me there is a couple of faces that maybe seem familiar or go from one work to another. Was she working with any specific person as a model or was she kind of working from her imagination purely? I think she's working mostly for, from her uh, imagination, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and she was also inspired by Futurist and Futurist was very popular. It, she, I think she was a uh, Futuristic uh, painter, Futuristic graphic painter, and she was inspired by Futurist, uh, but all what she's doing is she's taking it from her imagination for sure. But we can see that uh, uh, her the special attitude to cinematography was also taken from photographers because here, for example, I can show you, for example, this uh, picture calls, uh, I, I wasn't able to, uh, uh, I, I, it has uh, two uh, titles, cinematography, and the second one is shot from the film or something like that. And I think that even this picture shows that she was interested in this field of art. And um, she was inspired by Futurist because uh, here in the, in the only, the only um, example of the magazine HOS04, published in 1924, uh, the cinema is referred to as the new internationalist type of the art. And here you can read that they, what do, do they say? Theater is dying and cannot be subjected to any type of revival and innovation. The cinema is approaching as a constructor of lives. Cinematography is a new type of art. The cinema is the first internationalist. And uh, theater is dying for yes, I, I, yes, so I think that uh, Lali uh, totally shared this position and she wanted to be closer to cinematography. Um, but, but she also has some very interesting work like this. Yes, it was, uh, it was such a striking work. Uh, I, I saw this in this in your book, and uh, and also uh, she worked with so many different mediums and so many different capacities that it somehow it influences her all uh, the her legacy. When you look at it, she worked as as a stage set designer, right? She worked as a painter. She worked as designer of, of book covers. Uh, so many different roles, and everywhere you can see the same kind of. Uh, approach to it. it it's a very consistent across the mediums uh, yeah it, yes she was very active but she had a very active position as an artist and she was work, trying to work in many sphere and in every of them she was very good let's say and also uh, now, using her two to all two sons all by herself right after uh, uh after her husband was repressed he she was yes she was all by herself. she was all by herself she was yeah, she had two uh, kid, two sons um, and uh, mother, and she had to work. She had uh, to do everything that uh, that can because um, she was um, she was all by herself. That's right. Uh, I think she was a tragic person, indeed. And she, she had not enough time to for her to to real, for her realization. Yes, and yeah. as another great, strong Georgian woman who did all this amazing work on top of being the, the model, you know, for her children, and it's uh, she had extraordinary life. I'm so glad that you are able to talk to us about her because, I mean, before we had this conversation, before starting this project, to be honest, I didn't hear much about her. I mean, I, I heard the name a couple of times, but it never connected. So it, it's great that you're working for Legacy. It's, Thank you. I, I hope that this album helped this artist to become famous because uh, she deserves this for sure. She's very extraordinary. Uh, so tell me more about this portrait. So this is also from uh, 1930s, right? I believe. Yeah, no, it, no, it's 1920s as well. Right. Lali actively employed the expression language of Google Futurist, and now I want to talk a little bit about this. She especially uses this in portraits. The first that we can say concerning that Lali's portrait is that they are uh, they are quite it, it's quite easy for the viewer to contact to it. So this is quite unusual for the futuristic mode of painting due to active manner of expression, who doesn't leave uh, sufficient space for the image. Now, but she also have some mutes in this uh, manner, or uh, the design sketches also. 
But now I want to talk to you about uh, the portraits. For example, this. Uh, uh, what I meant that uh, uh, this Kubo futuristic expression doesn't leave sufficient space for the image. If we will remember the compositions by Natalia Gancherov and Lyubov Babova, uh, they are ruled by the Kubo futuristic manner of painting and therefore uh, employ the image strictly for they employ the image strictly for self-expression and not on the contrary. It's difficult for the viewer to perceive both a portrait itself and its background. Here, for example, it's very uh, difficult to, to find the additional detail in the composition. The boundaries are erased as everything is subject, subjected to the united principle of form, form creation. But in the version of Futurism that we have in Lali's creative work, unlike the Russian avant-gardists, uh, she employs the method of Futurism in a more preserved manner. Being a graphic painter, she has always foregrounds the graphic parameters. Unlike flat rock and voluminous rectangular shapes, Lali uses uh, the smaller ones, the smaller flattened lines uh, and brush strokes. Uh, Lali doesn't break down the image into spacious and voluminous shapes, and she tries to make the image readable, I would say, mm -hmm. the readable. Right. In this case, in this case, for example, so uh, the difference the difference lies in the fact that with one of the uh, with our Russian avant-garde, this manner reaches a wider scope and rules over the whole painful structure of the painting. As a method, it is more expressive, let's say. However, Lali uses this method only partially to create one or another part of the work. But putting such a voluminous emphasis on face, Lali differs from the Russian uh, colleagues. Uh, and comes closer to the Georgian painters. Lali makes differences first on, uh, for the first rate and secondary moments in uh, moments in, in the image. For example, she has the figure, she also has the background, and you, you, it's very easy for us to uh, see both of them, the image and the environment. Uh, and I think this is, this is the uh, unique characteristic feature of the Georgian art painting. Uh, of the beginning of 20th century. And so that's why the best parallel for Lali's work is not the Russian uh, avant-gardist, but the Georgian, Irakli Dambekeli. And this portrait, I think, is the one of the better parallels for Lali's it's work. Continuous, though. Yeah, this, yeah. Is one of, this is the man's portrait created by Irakli Dambekeli from one of the performances. I think it's very easy to see uh, let's say to see the kinship between these images. Yeah. Uh, but uh, um, I think that uh, there's one another. This is a self-portrait of the artist. And looking at this picture, I think we can feel a, a surprising human tragedy, which doesn't comply with the let's say with the futuristic pathos, futurist pathos. Mm -hmm. which, uh, as usual, is based on feeling of, of uh, excitement with technical pro progress and the speedy pace of life. Uh, I think that this makes one more feature by which Lali differs from the artistic movement she follows and maintains a certain inward distance from it. So she's always independent. She has inward distance from any uh, movement she uh, follows. Uh, therefore, based on above, we uh, cannot easily and hesitatingly claim that there, uh, that uh, Lalis uses uh, the Kupu Futurism in, in pure form. Uh, in the version of Kupu Futurism given by Lali, protection correlations, their interrelationship, as well as their distribution of accents in the specific movement, is different. Uh, here, as well as in, uh, in other, is, uh, in, uh, as in above mentioned pictures. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we deal only with the partial sharing of avant-garde movements principles and not with the complete uh, obedience to them, which is very important. And now I, I want to say a few words about the trace of constructivism in this work. The presence of tectonically in interconnected lines, beams, angular shapes, and curves uh, takes the viewer in this direction. It can also be claimed that an exactly similar shape we have in uh, one of the most prominent representatives we have in the creative art of uh, one of the most prominent representatives of Russian constructivism, Alexander Rodchenko, specifically in this uh, in this album of engraving, 
which is done in 1990. Uh, here you can see what the similar forms are there. But looking at this issue closer, we must we can notice minor differences. With Lali, this construction has a more empirical character, and it's it's uh, it's uh, it has an empirical uh, um, uh, character, and it's but although it still comes into the composition as absurd component, but this but uh, in uh, in the work of uh, Alexander Kimbo, it's some, something um, uh, absolutely uh, I don't know it's something absolutely uh, out of the out of the reality. Yes, it's a very abstract compared to. Uh, yeah, uh, let's say yes, definitely emotional component here with this human face, and it's there. Um, it's more geometric. It's much more sterile, I would say. It's abstract. The, the human uh, factor is taken out of it, and I think with Lali, it's always there in some form. Yes, yes, exactly. But this minor difference still allows us to claim almost external similarity between them, between right. these two images. Uh, um, and I think it's possible to suppose that Lali was well aware of the album by Rochingo, or she had a good knowledge of Russian constructivism, and okay. probably she was also uh, inspired by it. Why not? Why not? Sure. But, um, mm -hmm. uh, so let's continue, Christina. Sorry for the technical difficulty. Mm -hmm. um, so please, constructivism in Lali's creative works, right, mm -hmm. is our next kind of um, thing. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, we should say that out of the avant-garde avant movements of the 20th century, Lali employs constructivist more frequently. But in this case, Lali uses both the works of the Georgian artists following the same direction and the achievements of Russian, construct, uh, Russian scenography and the easel painting. But a contract, a constructivist works by Lali can be divided into two subgroups. Slightly overcrowded compositions with specific images and lighter compositions with a higher degree of arbitrariness. Uh, in the first type of compositions, prevail specific images like buildings, architectural details, um, for example, uh, stairs, arcs, open spaces. All these details overload the space. On the other hand, the compositions of the second group, together with the above named objects, are characterized by non specified arbitrary geometrical objects and compositions. Here you can see some of them on the screen. Uh, sorry. And here she's more daring with color. I would say that she became yes, more daring. Yes, exactly. Uh, uh, for example, this uh, work, that, which you see on the screen, is one of the biggest painting work in Lali's creative art. Because as usual, she's a graphic, she, she's a graphic painter as well, already said. Uh, and she um, much less, uh, she frequently uses the, she's uh, making her graphic works on the paper or cardboard and she uh, uses less uh, oil on canvas. And this is the biggest painting we have from Lali. Uh, it's called an industrial composition. But even this is not uh, a typical industrial composition in which artistic reality is transformed, is transformed, transposed into a complex mechanized construction regulated by the only law of the dynamic uh, industrial world. Lali, even in this case, tends far from the Russian abstract constructivist, and she co comes a little bit closer to Georgian painters. And I think that uh, the, uh, I want to show you some other works from this group. Uh, yes, and she's closer to Georgian um, parallels for her works. Maybe uh, can be uh, Iraqi Kambekeli's circus or her or his uh, theatrical scenery. However, the similarity between these works is uh, superficial and is uh, confined to only more general artistic principles. Here, are circus. Mm -hmm. In Lali's works, uh, we see real industrial mechanism creating a painted version of reality. Due to this feature, Lali distances herself from Russian constructivists of the period and makes uh, uh, more unreal arbitrary abstract constructions. Well, for example, the Russians make more arbitrary abstract constructions. For example, Lubov Babova uh, makes uh, 
so-called tinter architectonics. Mm -hmm. uh, so I and actually, Lubopopova is very well known in New York. I was surprised. Yes. A lot of people, she was rediscovered recently, but a lot of people have a knowledge of her. So, um, she's very famous yeah. indeed. That's Russian true. art artists are very famous all over the world. And that's why it's very normal and it's logical because they have the really brilliant avant garde movements in Russia in the but beginning. But somehow it's Popova's name that comes up more than any other name from that period of Russian um, avant-garde movement. Which yeah, is for sure, right. we can call Lyubov Popova, Natalia Nancharo, Mikhail Larionov, uh, Kazimir Malevich, uh, and more and more others. Uh, so there are lots of them. But I think that the uh, closer to Lali's art is, is Lyubov Popova, mm -hmm. Larionov, and maybe uh, Edrochenko as well, as well over Edrochenko, the years. Yes, that you mentioned before, right? Yes. Uh, I think that Lali's uh, uh, constructivist works are uh, closer to the, to, uh, to the later stage of uh, constructivism, which mm -hmm. is after the 1930s. The sketch for the magazine cover techniques. Yes. Oh, yes. I saw that in, this, the in, in your book as well. This is, uh, yeah, the, the, the Soviet time posters of this period. And especially with her, she, she adds so many, so much more dynamism to this, right? It's so much more kind of dynamic exactly. and striking, it's a different approach. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And uh, I, I would like also to talk about trace of Luchis, rayonis or rays in Lali's creative works. Um, it shows uh, what a wide specter of uh, imagination, imagination she has. Uh, as has been mentioned about the typical method in Emily Lai's ability work, uh, work yes. is um, works involves fragmentation of the picture space. Very often the image is crossed, although not overlapped, but crossed, crossed by two lines pulling out of one shared point and opening at various types of angles. This sh shape can be labeled as beam, but it's, it's just, uh, just arbitrary, not an exact meaning of this word. In frequent cases, the central meeting point of lines is not visible, but uh, you can uh, restore it through the eye experiment, and as usual, it's its presence can be implied beyond the limits of the picture. There are much less frequent cases of cases when beam is semantically connected with the images, especially with the uh, with the eye mm -hmm. and with the stare. For example, these ones, these are the portraits yes, uh, from good. memory, Lalo, and the Lalo is the self-portrait, by the way, and the portrait of man, where you can see the thing that comes out from the man, uh, man's eye. And Christina, this uh, is about interesting. I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, also it reminds me how this similar the visual device is used in frescoes, right? In, in Renaissance, we see this kind of in, in Christianic visions, there is similar kind of visual device in some of uh, 20th, uh, 12th century, 13th century. I was just looking at, at works from that period. Well, and it's interesting idea. I never thought about it but, uh, because I think that uh, um, I'm not sure that it's connected with the Byzantine or with the medieval period art. I'm not sure about it, but right. maybe it's maybe it is. Maybe she was maybe a good idea. idea. Yes, but it's a similarity. Sure. Yeah, kind of similarity. Mm. Um, but this manner the, uh, that involves breaking down the whole picture plane or specific image into beams, which Lali uses frequently. Mm -hmm. And I think here we can see the elements of cubism, cubo futurist, and constructors, which is quite well known by uh, the art of the 20th century, of the beginning of the 20th century in Europe as well as in Russia. Uh, and we can also see that this technique also finds a frequent realization in the works by Georgian artists. And here on the screen, you can see uh, the works of Iraklik and Bergeri, here are the graphic portraits of Lenin and Trotsky created in 1924. And we also see here uh, the work of La by Lato Grigolia, which can mm -hmm. be also the um, closely resembling this work. 
Uh, I think that the, all of these works are marked by co-futuristic stylistics. It is significant that both authors addresses the genre of portrait as Lali. At the same time, both artists, as you can see here, present the surrounding environment as a chaotic urban uh, view. Urban view of high-rise buildings and complex engineering constructions broken down in, into, in a co-futuristic manner. So it's like uh, it's like the scam. It's like the um, based uh, uh, images for all the all all these um, artists. Mm -hmm. However, it should also be noted that with Lali, the described manner goes beyond all the manipulation with expressive means of the above named moments. It shows much more individualistic manner of expression employed by the author. It has the characteristic of an independent artistic method. She seems to be experimenting with this uh, shapes. She, it's, it looks like the artistic play. She's, she's making some experiment with the shapes. And uh, this is kind of artistic method. Uh, the result of it is to, um, to use futuristic manner or constructivist, or constructivistic manner, but not in a pure form. She is kind of artistic experiment of La Emma Lalaiva uh, And I think that uh, the principle of composition, uh, the, the, we, I think that it uh, comes close to Larionov's which is Larionov declared in front of a big audience uh, this manifesto of Luchis and Futurists in 1913. And uh, I want to, I want to uh, here on the screen, you can see the citation. Just, yeah, so just adding the fourth dimension as the length, width, and thickness, yes. Uh, I, uh, for example, Lariano declared for that the Luci starts the process of liberating self-contained painting with its own shapes, color, and timbre, and it will now lead the life according to its own laws. And I think that uh, it's very interesting that Lali started to work in this direction and started to make these kind compositions, abstract compositions, much later. I think what was interested in Lilibok Papo was so-called painter architectonic. Mm -hmm. We'll have it here. Just a moment. Here, I want to show you Lali's works from 80s and the 60s. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about this kind of abstract mm -hmm. composition. Yeah. Yeah. Or these later ones. Okay. And I think that, and this is Rebot Babo's uh, so-called uh, painterly architectonic. Abstractions by Lali present some later reflections of that, I think so. From this standpoint, it is significant that the painter interested in abstract in the 60s, but she didn't involve herself in abstract impressionism, which was born in America and became popular all over the world as well now. Nevertheless, Lali remained dedicated to the avant-garde movement of the beginning of the 20th century because it was closer to her heart, maybe. She, 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 anyway, she was closer. She was feeling herself closer to the uh, avant-garde movement of the beginning of the 20th century. On the other hand, it is also significant that Lali, an elderly painter, she was over 60 uh, for that time, and she lived in Soviet reality, in Soviet country, in Soviet Georgia for that time, but she created abstract compositions till the end of her life. And I, I, I think that this reveals Lali's ageless. It shows that she was evolving and developing artistic nature all her life. Throughout her, her artistic career. For example, yeah, for example, in the 60s and 80s, she was creating this kind of corporate uh, kind uh, compositions. Combines, yes, yeah, similar to combines, definitely. Yeah. So I think it's important to explore how well aware she was uh, with the various modernist movements of the period she lived in. However, in order to 
better perceive the potential of femoral alveolar diabetes as an artist. It is important to ascertain uh, the degree of uh, independence and sharing of various modernistic movements and artistic concepts by Lali. From the very start, Lali tried not to be carried away by painting matters of some artistic movements. And by doing so, she and the, by doing so, she was trying not to restrict her own individuality. While, while operating with any stylistic of modernist moments, she Lali tries manages to maintain a certain distance from them. And, to, and by this way, she she uh, she manages to protect her independence and establish her own individual style. So Emily Levin is an artist with a unique individualistic manner of expression who always relates on and always follows It can be claimed that Lali's works were an organic part of Georgian and world art uh, avant-garde of the 1920s. And Lali is one of the interesting and prominent representatives of that period. Acute interest towards the Western modernist movements makes Lali the most left-wing artist am amongst uh, her contemporaries. Due to this, she may not be easily considered amongst the Georgian modernist, art modernist artists whose creative work, especially after 1920s, uh, after 1930s, let's say, are more or less balanced with side effects, such as, uh, such as uh, specifically Georgian motifs or characteristic landscapes or an ancient Georgian manner of uh, stylization, uh, which we don't have in Lali's creative art ever. However, these uh, diversions, which might even have been the only tool of self-survival in the newly Soviet-sized country, preserved creative works of the most prominent Georgian artists from uh, and protect their names from uh, how to say from the artificial amnesia. Mm -hmm. uh, so much typical for the Soviet countries and for the Soviet realm. Anonymity also. A lot of this is just it's anonymous. A lot of those names, right? I mean, they're just part of the system, unfortunately, and they they went exactly. along with them. Exactly, they became the part of it. But it was the they had no choice. They right. had no choice. It was the only way to survive, uh, not just uh, to survive physically. Even. Sure. And I think that uh, maybe this one more reason why Lali such a unique artist had disappeared from the, for a long time from the pages of Georgian art, Georgian art history. And uh, I, I would That's just, all what I wanted to say about Lali. That's outstanding presentation, Christina. I really appreciate your time. I just wanted to ask you a little bit about, so in her lifetime, it, it's so such a uh, unfortunate fact. She never had a personal exhibition in her lifetime, right? So it was never in 2001, had. her first personal exhibition that took place. Yes, she never had it because uh, I think she was just afraid because his husband uh, was, became the victim of the regime, totalitarian regime, and she was. Uh, the, it was the fear that follows her all her life. She was trying to be. She was trying to disappear. Mm -hmm. She was trying not to be as uh, not to be too much active. Uh, uh, that's why she wasn't well known uh, even among the uh, specialists. And her reputation starts from the 20, from the beginning of 21st century, and it's uh, connected somehow with uh, the gallery of old gallery, which uh, made her her first personal exhibition in the 2001. Are, are there any plans for any future exhibitions that maybe you are involved with? with that, that yes, my, my parents were involved with this. So it was the old gallery, well, the owners of the old gallery were my parents. So I had the honor to, <laughs> to be the part of this first exhibition. Are you planning uh, of creating something similar with the Lali's work in the future, 
creating an exhibition. Uh, uh, yes, I would like to. But after that, she had uh, three or four uh, solo exhibitions as well, but uh, that was also in other galleries because others also decided to make her exhibitions. She also, she's also participating, uh, I, not she, but her works are also participating in the group exhibitions, uh, which are uh, concern, which concerns uh, the modernism of Georgian, uh, Georgian modernism of the beginning of 20th century. So I think that step by step, she became quite popular among specialists and uh, in Georgian society as well. And I wanted to say that in 2001, uh, Lalis works were exposed on Art Expo in USA, in New York. Mm -hmm. Also yeah. my parents. I heard that, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. But in New York, you know how hard it is to, to keep the track of all the... Unfortunately, it's very... I, I, as a curator, I work a lot with Georgian artists and it, it, there are so many different kind of barriers to present Eastern European mm -hmm. art, Georgian art in this big scene, but um, maybe it's something to plan for the future. It will be my pleasure. Uh, Christina, it will, it will be so great. Much. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you so much for, for the presentation and for so much relevant information about this outstanding artist. It, it was my pleasure to talk to you about this. It was my pleasure. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much.